to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Woo. I got to give this game a little bit of juice here. It's, it's going to need some help, boys. I appreciate that, Mike. We've often been surprised by a sure pleasant Thursday night football game. It's just we go some, some, you know, it's a book, judge the book by its cover thing. Usually that book uh, cover is very accurate. Yeah, Jets, Patriots. Yeah. We get to see Drake May tonight. That's cool. Oh. Oh. <laughs> just, what are you doing? I've just. Leave you, Jacoby I, alone. Look, I, I said this before the show. My biggest hope is that Jacoby makes it through this game. Like, that's. I want to be proud of him for just leaving this game uninjured. They have no offensive line. They're facing a good pass rush. I like, but, fear for the man. But how are you going to feel if, like, because you've been saying this all week, like, you have basically been placing your bets on Jacoby Brissett not surviving the game. I mean, <laughs> if it happens, you're I, not celebrating. No, no. I really don't want it to happen. I just – it's literally me, you know, when, when I'm looking at it from a fantasy football perspective and a and just a, a, an analysis perspective of the game, I don't know what they're going to do. Like, I, I just feel like – you know, the, we saw that with the Rams and the Cardinals when, when they were down their offensive line and Matthew Stafford, who is a much better quarterback than Jacoby Brissett, facing a much worse pass rush in the Arizona Cardinals still was just like it was it felt like an unfair fight. And so the I, Jets are the Jets are a bit deficient in the pass rush department due to injury at this point. So they maybe it's a little bit of you know give and take there. We'll we'll pray for Jacoby. Yeah, I mean I I'm I'm being hyperbolic and they're both NFL teams. It's not just going to be um, you know, you know, uh, the 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 bullfighting red flag offensive line. They're gonna they're gonna have some stuff in store, but um, yeah, I I hope it is more competitive than we think. Thank you for joining us today on the podcast. You can find us over on X at the FF Ballers. Jason's at Jason FFL. You can follow Mike at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. We have a free Discord server. You can go join the community chat over there. BallersDiscord.com. And uh, if you want to support the show, if you want a bunch of free perks, extra episodes, the ultimate dashboard, uh, premium tools, resources, the stream finder, all of that for the in season, uh, for the in season tools, join the foot. The dashboard is hot. I, it, it's already become like a an indispensable tool for me. Like I'm, it just speeds up my process so much to just go and like look at. Oh yeah, this is what my lineup should be, and then just mirror it. As opposed to Mike, who loads his lineup into the ultimate dashboard and it explodes. <laughs> it doesn't let him put Christian McCaffrey in. It doesn't let him put T. Higgins in. It doesn't like it doesn't like change any of their injury outcomes, which we can't do, unfortunately. The the dashboard has asked me repeatedly, Are you sure this is this is your team? <laughs> you I, did are you sure you did that? I, I don't I don't take pleasure in saying this, Mike, but I looked at your team this morning. Uh huh. Did you like it? <laughs> <laughs> I looked at it and I said, "This is a bad team." Yeah, I bet I said, the this spot team... start tool, the spot start when you click there, it's just, it's just all the guys on waiver. Like, I mean, Mike drop has... Christian McCaffrey and play Jacoby Myers. And I just looked at your bench and I'm like, "Oh yeah, T Higgins, all right." But I mean, like even without T Higgins, this team's bad. And I'm like, "Oh wait, it's oh Christian McCaffrey." Oh, oh okay. Like I mean, your team is. Look, we're leaning heavily on the Cleveland Browns DST this week. <laughs> Have you – is this a good time, Jason, to bring up our routine like you need to hang in there if you're 0-2 messaging? It, it, it really is. I was actually thinking about it because we, we usually bring this up after a hard start to the season. And 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 with Mike having – I mean, Mike is like the one case I've ever thought like, yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, we tell the foot clan, 20, like, don't give up. 2025. <laughs> Never surrender. You are always in it. We get so many messages every single year. Yeah, we have the like, data. No. We... Never give up. <laughs> Never surrender. We we uh we we get those messages. I started 0 and four, 0 and five, and I I I went on a run. I made the playoffs. I won the championship. 
we tell people, like, don't give up, especially because some people in your league are going to give up, and they're going to be easier matchups down the line. But, Mike, I don't know, man. Hey, just... We will we will uh, figure something out. He's not even at the point in the season where, like, selling makes sense. No. Like, no, cons- I'm not selling. No, I mean, 0-3 is normally when we get the messages and the tilt, and we have the data. I mean, we have thousands and thousands of players every year, and we hear from all of you, and, like, People are coming back and winning because, like you said, other players, they lose interest. They're not as active. The waiver wire, they're ignoring it. They get injuries. I mean, injuries happen every week, so the team that looks like a powerhouse uh, suddenly disappears. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, (laughs) good luck, Mike. Hang in there. Hang in there. Let's talk about some news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Cooper Cup has been officially diagnosed with a high ankle sprain. He will spend the next week or so in a cast. Uh, I'm guessing not playing in that, but the team is not putting him on, on putting him on IR right away. I, I wonder if this will be a still a chance for IR, but like we want to see how the swelling goes. That's that's exactly what I think it is. Also, they you know they you don't have infinite. I believe you know you you can't you put. Don't. No. You can't put everyone you want on IR and have them eligible to return, and they already have a quite full hospital room there. So I, I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't go on IR and s- misses like three weeks. Nico Collins didn't practice on Wednesday due to hip and foot injuries. Do you have any other information on his situation? Wednesday is not always a red alert day. Yeah, there was quite a few big names that they just – like Nico didn't practice, C.D. Lamb did not practice, D.K. Metcalf, D.K. Metcalf did not practice. These are all situations where it's just it's always it's Wednesday, so don't freak out, but put put your antennae into the air. Yeah, it, it's really helpful to know two things. One is Wednesday practices for veterans are often missed. That's normal. And two, all three of those players finished the game. Um, you know, I got, I saw DK pop up and I was a little worried. I went and watched his, his post game press conference. That dude was not hurting. And so maybe there's something with the hand injury or whatever, but like he played the whole game, had no issue afterwards was, you know, jovial and, and normal and then has the Wednesday practice off. So I'm not worried yet. Jake Ferguson, not Jack, Jake Ferguson was limited on Wednesday, but he was back out there, which was awesome to see. I saw yep. some film of that Jordan Love returned to a limited practice on Wednesday there is still a chance he plays I is wild I'm still on the doubtful side if you and not that you care about my opinion but that's where I'm at yeah I'm doubtful as well and I'm doubtful of like if if you had love I have to imagine you are already planned planning for someone else to be your quarterback for this week and Jordan Love should he miraculously recover in time to play he's on the road against the Tennessee Titans with that bum leg, so I would probably stick with your other option, unless your other option was just garbage. Kenneth Walker still didn't practice on Wednesday. There was the there was a slight didn't play early, last week. A short little video clip of him running, not even at full speed. Uh, he's just kind of, you know, a, not a jog, but whatever. Like our and, kind of running. Yeah, like our kind of running. And then he just and he grabs right oh, to really? the side. I like, didn't see that. Oh god. And th- this is dude. this is an injury or an area of his body that he is he's dealt with. Uh, do some short- sit-ups, bro. <laughs> career, yeah. Do the do the turn <laughs> at the top of the <laughs> sit-up, man. Get those obliques <laughs> tight. Raheem Mostert returned to a limited practice could return this week. Devon Achan is 5th in the NFL in total touches at the running back position. You're going to break him. But that's Stop I was going to say that. Do you almost are you almost excited to see Raheem Mostert back because yeah, I, they lost Jeff Wilson, who who also returned to a limited practice, same sit up injury uh, as Walker. But yeah, Mostert I mean, I, being back takes some load off of Devon Achan. It's very good for the Dolphins, and I think for Achan, Achan's fantasy value is going to come mostly through the air. You saw a lot of checkdowns when Skyler got in the game. Uh, I noticed that uh, there was no line for his receiving uh, for his receptions. I think they're. Go- I think you're going to see a ton of dump offs there. So letting Raheem Mostert run it up through the tackles, I think is is good. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. 
Starts of the week. We'll kick off our matchup show with our starts of the week for week number three and a quarterback. I'm going Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow against yes, sir. Washington on Monday night football. He got back on track last week, and he didn't even need Jamar Chase to throw 258-2. and two. Higgins could return, even if he doesn't. I love this matchup. This is the team that Baker Mayfield carved up for four touchdowns in week one, where Daniel Jones looked very competent last week, finishing as the QB7. And Washington has allowed every quarterback not named Trevor Simeon or Mac Jones to score 18 plus fantasy points in the last 18 games. So it should be a very easy 202 for Joe Burrow with tremendous upside against Washington. All right. And for my quarterback start of the weekend to get that button ready, because I am going to do it. I'm going to send in the car. Send in the car. The double he's, up. He's doubling up. Oh, no. Stream of the week, start of the week. <laughs> he was your hungry for more. Uh, that is, this is all bad Mike news. Mike is starting him in league of record. That that's, might be the worst. That's the worst part of the news. Um, I'm starting him in a couple leagues. I really do think it's, it, I'm, I'm buying into the change it, with Kubiak's offense. What we've seen, it's not just that, um, you know, he had two good weeks. It's that there is a reason for it. The, the way that they're, uh, using their players much, much smarter. Alvin Kamara looks great. And the Eagles matchup seems great. I mean, the Eagles secondary, it's its still not fixed. They're tied with the Rams for the highest yards per completion allowed in the NFL, and they've allowed a top 12 performance um, nine of their last 12 games dating back to last year. I think this will – and he's at home. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start him if I got him. And I'm trying to look, you know, of, of, a, of a different type of start, but – Steel underpants. If you didn't get Derek Carr, I'm going with Geno Smith against I, Miami. Jason, what is your face telling he me? He just Dude. said this morning that he loves Geno. I had no idea. Hey, I had, we ride, bro. I had no idea. Two dudes, that he two was pairs <laughs> of steel underpants. I had no idea he was your start of the week. Um, I'm completely in. Uh, if you saw the waivers that just ran a I couple did. minutes ago, I picked them up. Did you pick them up? I did. I I, I think I might be starting now, this week. The, the Smith only has one pair of steel underpants at a time so we are one leg in oh we're we're one yeah leg if you're if you're if you're going in with me i don't know we're not really protected uh, i'll 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 go without uh steel underpants you can have the steel underpants. all right so here's the deal geno smith is looking like a good quarterback again so far qb7 qb5 completed 74 percent of his passes the ryan grubb offense is working we saw it expand even more last week to get jsn properly used and the Charbonne zone, which I anticipate we will be in again. The dude, the only way that he is getting it done, talking about Zach Charbonnet, volume. is volume and a pass interference in the end zone. That's that's how a rushing touchdown happens. Otherwise, the scores are going to go to Geno and that wide receiver crew. The Charbonne zone, huh? This dude, is what yeah. you're left with? Charbonnet is. is a fine enough start, but that guy, that guy sucks yeah, as a it's runner not right now. Good. But, and I, I mean, you – if you've been a long-time listener, like, I loved Charbonnet. <laughs> like, beyond measure coming out of college, I thought he was so exceptional, and he just looks so big and slow. He's a, still a good pass catcher. He's fine for fantasy. He's a workhorse back while, uh, you know, while Kenneth Walker's yeah. out. But I'm not saying sit him, but he, it's gross. Yeah. My running back start of the week is Tony Pollard against Green Bay. He has looked uh, very good so far. Maybe yeah. the steadiest part of that Tennessee offense. RB11 and RB23 through two weeks. And uh, he's the only running back to see 15-plus carries and four targets in week one and two. Green Bay matchup, it's run funnel. They're giving up 5.1 a carry. And we're set up. Like, this is it's time. It's time for Tony Pollard to take the mantle. The identity of this team is going to be to remove the ball from Will Levis's hands. So... Especially if you get Malik Willis out there, and this is a lower scoring game potentially, a run versus run. Um, I think Tony Pollard is is a great start. Yeah, I I agree completely. Uh, my start of the week is going to go with your quarterback. We love playing against the Washington Commanders. My guy Zach Moss. Um, he is the clear lead back. He if, is. You if you haven't paid attention, the whole like, is it going to be Zach Moss? Is it going to be Chase Brown? Is it going to be a fifty fifty timeshare? Uh, the you know 
the early season bets are in, and it's been Zach Moss. I mean, 65%, up to 80% of the snaps last week, 75% of the rushing attempts. Um, last week against Kansas City, he had five carries inside the 20. It did not amount to much, but Washington is not Kansas City. Their defense ranks dead last in points per drive allowed. I mean, you saw Devin Singletary carve them up last week for 5.9 a carry. I think Zach Moss will have the work in this game. They will be up and winning the game, and the defense won't be able to stop it. And I'm going with Zamir White, who gets to play against the Carolina Panthers. Who the I Pan saw this, Mike. Look, hey, this is it, this is all about the process, man. Vegas is a five point favorite in this matchup. The Panthers are allowing basically 200 rushing yards per game. And here is the quote from the head coach of the Raiders. Quote, I'm talking about Zamir. I'm going to keep pumping him up. Our goal is to get 20-plus touches with him. That was the goal last week, or this week. It didn't happen, but that's going to be the goal this week and every week while he's the starting running back, and I'm here. Game script-wise, this is a make-or-break week for them. They're, they're dead last in the NFL in rushing yards per game, and they face Carolina. So I think uh, that if, this is a – I'm not going to call it the get-right game because I don't know if it means he will – you don't know what right looks like yeah. for Zamir White. Well, I don't know if for the future he is now on the right path, but for this week, it's I just think a right can, game. You can play. Yeah, there yeah. you go. It's a white game. Yeah, Zamir, Zamir White. Oh, right. It's the right time to play white. And that'll do it for today's show. <laughs> uh, where are we moving to? Wide receiver? Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to go with Chris Olave against Philadelphia. This is the get right game for Chris Olave. Uh, Rashid Shahid has stolen the headlines. But the usage is there for Chris Olave, and the matchup is there for Chris Olave. You know, this is a Philadelphia secondary that gave up the most fancy points to wide receivers last year, and is at the second most through two weeks this year. And so in week one, we saw Jaden Reed and Christian Watson score against him. Last week, it was Mooney and Drake London. Uh, maybe a sell high for Drake London, honestly. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. But uh, this is this is Chris Olave time. They're going to need him because, you know, for I think you're going to have Philadelphia staying in this game, and so you need to go to your go-to receiver, not just your downfield guy in, in Shahid. So Chris Olave versus Philadelphia is my start of the week. Nice. Uh, I'm going to go with your my guy as my start of the week, Calvin Ridley. Look at this. Um, against Green Bay. Last week got into the end zone twice. He was awesome. Through two weeks, he has 24% target share and 74% of the team's wide receiver fantasy points, that is there was, the highest in the NFL. There was a point last week when Will Levis was trying to bring them back at the end of that game where an end zone target went to this one player, and I was like, who is – and it was Hopkins. <laughs> like it was DeAndre – it was the corpse of DeAndre Hopkins in the corner of the end zone, and I was like – Just looked like a guy. You almost forget they have other receivers. Yeah, well, that, that's the point is he is uh, the most important part of this offense, and he's a high upside – type of player the Packers secondary allowing the fourth most receiving first uh first downs in the NFL so far Jamison Williams against the Arizona Cardinals about 90 percent of the snaps a 25 percent target share five receptions in each of the first two games he is a part of the offense and he's playing against the Arizona secondary plus this is just this is a matchup the, the Lions in Arizona you're going to want pieces mm -hmm. in that one and Jamison Williams is he's getting into my lineup and he is <laughs> Very frustrated with himself for trading JMO for uh, Amari Cooper. Right now, I'm very frustrated. I, with I'm going to look into your orb. You will remain frustrated. Maybe. Maybe I will. I really, you know, I really tried to trust Jason last week. On Amari Cooper? Yeah. Oh, Jason's fault. Oh, my, the trade yeah. was my fault. Sort of. Okay. All right. Well, hey, I'll take Now play. you're even. Now, oh no, we are not even. <laughs> we will never be even for my Jalen Waddle, CD Lamb trade. You guys made me. Do. You are. We will even. never be even. You're even. Yeah, if you if that you shouldn't have a championship last year because CD Lamb shouldn't have been yours. It should have been mine. Everything is even. So yes, it's your fault. If you blame that one on <laughs> us, then this one's your fault. But um, no, my face. I, I never knew about your trade. This, you not, guys told me to make this trade. You don't know about how many trades are being made out there in the world all that right. are that are your fault. Um, all right. Did we get through all the wide receivers? We did. All right. I'm going to go Brockham Sockham Brock Bowers. Heck yeah, man. Against Carolina. 
targeted on 30% of his Brock routes. Brock'em, sock'em, robots? Brock'em, sock'em. Okay. And uh, <laughs> right now it's just ridiculous. Brock Bowers is, uh, this is the endorsement for every trade you can make to get Brock Bowers on your roster. Every flashy tight end name you can throw at the manager of Brock Bowers mm -hmm. to make the change. Like this offense is going to function. The one variable in the equation for Brock Bowers this year is a quarterback change. That would be the one thing I'd be worried about is if, if a quarterback change happens, you just never know what target distribution is going to look like. But I do know that tight ends wide open all over the field are probably going to get targeted. It, it's It's just – the contrast between what we're seeing this year from Kyle Pitts and what we've seen from Kyle Pitts for 46 games and what we've seen through two games of Brock Bowers, you know, this is not an overreaction. Like, this is – the evidence is already there that Brock Bowers is going to be an impact tight end for the remainder of his career. And we're 46 games in begging for the kind of utilization from Kyle Pitts that we got from Brock Bowers as a brand-new rookie. It's just – so, I mean, the throw, contrast is massive. I'd throw Dalton Kincaid's name in there as well. He was the promised one, and Brock Bowers is the one doing it. I got uh, a question on Twitter that was, would you trade Nico, my sweet, precious Nico, for Brock Bowers in a dynasty league? And oh, in a I, dynasty. And I was like – Maybe. I, I, I said I think I, I would probably do that. Like that's my, my level of confidence in Brock Bowers after just two games. Wow. Yeah, crazy, and I, I, I don't I don't blame you at all. If, if you have a tight end not named Trey McBride and you can swap him for Brock Bowers, I would do it. Uh, my start of the week this week is Mark Andrews, another one of those top-end tight ends who has yet to really explode and, and look great. He would have last week if he wasn't overthrown on yeah. um, a, a really nice wide-open spot. In fact, uh, he's number one in fantasy uh, points separation score. He is getting open. And the nice thing is this last week, we saw that Andrews was running way ahead of Isaiah Likely. Uh, 41 to 32 snaps, 27 to 18 routes run, 15% to 10% target share. Uh, against Dallas, I think this is going to be one of those games where they're going to need to throw the ball. Yeah, these are, these are, this is like a playoff game. Dallas is 1-1, one and, one, and the Ravens are 0-2. Oh right. Yeah, so they're, they're going to That's a fun game. It is. I'm very excited for that. I think they're going to need Mark Andrews in this. He hasn't looked bad to me. So he's my start of the week. And I wish I could jump into the dumpster and find something this week, but I just, I can't. There's nothing. There's no uh, amount of metal in the world that can get me onto the, one of these nasty tight ends right now, but it's George Kittle versus the Rams. Debo was out. 12 games without Debo. George Kittle's average seven targets and 80 receiving yards per game. This one is very easy of of the of Brock Kittle, Trey McBride, the only three tight ends I have true faith in at this moment. He's going to crush. All right, let's uh let's take a break and we'll jump into the forecast. All right, another big week of games. No bye weeks, lots to get through. Let's jump in. It's time for Fantasy Forecast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. The New York Giants at 0-2 take on the Cleveland Browns. They're 1-1. One one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Cleveland minus 6.5 at home. The over-under is 38.5. I think when you look at this game on the surface, you just ask yourself, can New York score any points? I mean, it, an implied point total of 16, Cleveland at home, a solid defense. They're going to make Daniel Jones look really, really bad in this game. That's the likelihood. And now, Jason, you were you were sitting back and asking the question, is Deshaun Watson going to have a good fantasy week? Because you're laboring over the Purdy and Geno and, you know, Watson maybe Watson uh, yeah I've, uh, I've got a, a real conundrum at quarterback this week for me and 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 certainly in the mix is Deshaun Watson who I think could be a top 12 quarterback this week against the Giants the Giants defense is not a terrible defense <clears throat> a terrible defense but it is a really really bad overall team and that puts you in situations for the other offense to score being on the road against a great Cleveland Browns defense that I think will not allow Malik Neighbors to do what he was able to do last week in, in a much easier matchup, 
I, the Giants just aren't going to do much. They're going to turn the ball over a couple times. They're going to punt a lot. And um, so, you know, the, the implied point total for the Browns is 22 and a half points. Deshaun Watson should have an okay game. Last week, Devin Singletary had – he looked very good, but it was Washington. Mm -hmm. 16 for 95, six a carry, one touchdown, did have a fumble, only one catch. Somehow that was only good enough for wide or running back 19 on the week, but it was a nice week for Devin Singletary. It doesn't feel like this is going to be a nice week for Devin Singletary. No, no. Devin Singletary is a very, very good matchup-based option. If they're playing a bad run D, they're going to rely on him. He's going to do well. He's a, he's a solid running back. But in a game like this where you're a six-and-a-half-point dog on the road against a good defense, I'm not playing Devin Singletary. Uh, yeah, you. So you'd go Charbonnet easily over Devin Singletary. Easily, yeah. yeah I mean, he just Singletary is a workhorse. I mean, seventy-one percent of the running back attempts in Week One, ninety-four this past week. And while it was only the one target, that was all the targets to the running back position. We could see more of those uh, this week. Looking over at the Browns' running back situation, that's I think that's the, the biggest question to me of this particular matchup. Jerome Ford, week one starter, workhorse for the Cleveland Browns. His his line right now for rushing yards is sitting at 49 and a half, but Deonta Foreman was the one who came in and got the bulk of the carries. While uh, Jerome Ford had the, the higher yards per carry because he had the big run. But it's between these two guys, where are the two of you, where are you looking? Because one of them, one of them should be good in I, this matchup. I, I think it's Foreman. Um personally in the way the way that this breaks down he had 48 percent of the rushing back attempts compared to 24 percent for Jerome Ford last week and this is the type of game where I think you have that big bodied back to ice the clock mm, I think it's Ford man Ooh, you think he's the form is Foreman versus Ford man oh I see what you did there are, are you on the Jerome Ford I'm side? on the Ford side I mean, I'm not. Ex I, like, that's why I asked the question. If, I I think if you get the question right, you're gonna have fantasy points. One of these guys is scoring a I touchdown, agree. and one of these guys is getting 15 carries. Um, uh, your guess is as good as mine. I'm going based on the utilization of last week and the literal pounds they weigh. That's that's <laughs> that is my hypothesis. What's crazy about Ford is that he was awesome last week. Yes. He was on, very good. On seven touches, he had he had 64 yards. He had a 36-yard run, but they didn't put him out there like you would have expected. So if it is a salt away the game, like if Ford's a part of the first half process of getting ahead, then I think you'll be happy, and you could be happy with both even. Malik Neighbors is an auto start each yeah. and every week. Last week was ridiculous. Uh, the target share on the year is 38%. <laughs> that's, and that's, you know what? 30% is outrageous, Foot Clan. If you don't know, like that's like that's the elite of the elite. That's what you want. 38 38 percent I mean right out of the gate Malik neighbors lock him in we're not gonna have to talk about him a lot on these shows because he's an auto start yeah on the other side mm. hanging with Mr. Cooper has been bleh so far this year 17 targets you love it you love it it's awesome how does he have five catches on 17 targets is he has 17 targets it's been outrageous like they are and and you know we talked about it all off season Jason you brought it up many times. Like the numbers, the splits for Amari Cooper with Deshaun Watson were always great. Yeah, last year. And so 17 targets, I always like here's something I always do when I'm looking at free agent options, especially beyond waiver day. Early in the season, I am looking at the stats. I'm not looking at projection and projected points. I want to see who's targeted last mm -hmm. week. I sort by target. It helps me find diamonds in the rough at tight end or wide receiver. Players that are on the field getting involved. Cooper's got all of that. After week one when he struggled on efficiency, Stefanski came out and said, hey, Cooper's a pro, which he is. He's a pro court, uh, pro wide receiver. He just goes out and does his job. But is this the make or break game? Because I think it is. I think this is the game where if he, if he goes out there against the Giants and lays an egg, you're really, really worried. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on kind of how it comes. If he le if he lays an egg while the team runs the ball a ton and they're up and they don't need to pass, I will still hold off. Um, if if they come out and you know he ends up with another 
seven, eight, nine targets and a bad game against this defense, then then I will be much, much more afraid. But I will say that I'm echoing what you are saying. When you are getting those targets, you are open. That is still a good thing. I don't think Amari Cooper has forgotten how to catch the ball despite each of the last two weeks. He had an egregious, very valuable drop in each game for fantasy. This so, sounds like me last week. <laughs> it does because that's why I traded for him. I thought he was a buy low target. The targets were so high. It was like, oh, they just didn't connect in week one, so I'm going to go buy him on the low, buy him on the cheap, trade high on Jameson Williams. We'll see how it works out. But Cooper or Tank Dell? See, I'd be, I'd be playing Cooper in this matchup. I'll go Cooper. Waddle or or with a new quarterback or I Amari Cooper? I would definitely go right. Cooper. Yeah. Demarcus Robinson against the 49ers? Cooper. Cooper. So we're all staying staying around, hanging. Yeah. I yeah. would go Dell over Cooper, but yes, on the others. Okay. Okay. And then Judy's looked quietly pretty okay through a couple of weeks. You need a spot start. Judy's getting targeted. Something you can look for. No David Njoku this week. We're moving on. The Packers are 1-1. One one. They take on the 0-2 Tennessee Titans in Tennessee. The DK Sportsbook line, Tennessee favored, minus two points. Over-unders, 38. Run versus Larf. run, versus run, baby. Malik Willis revenge game? Or is Jordan Love back? We'll find out. But this, this game, you know, obviously the – the so odds probably change quite a bit if Love's out there. Yeah, I mean, it, this is a game it's very difficult for us to talk about and get anything Emotionally. right. Not knowing. I mean, it's very easy. If, if Malik Willis is the starting quarterback, then you are playing Josh Jacobs under all – I mean, you're playing him no matter what, but he's been – he will be the game plan. And then I'm not starting any other wide receiver. I'm not starting Malik Willis. He, they're just trying to hide him and allow him to manage the game with a with a rushing attack. I'm not sure that's going to work against Tennessee the way that it can work against Indy last week when you were in Lambeau. And then obviously things change, right? Like if if Jordan Love is there, now you could start talking about getting Christian Watson and and Jaden Reed back in your lineups. If he's not there, well, there's well, no Jayden way Jaden Reed playing. was one of those did not practice on Wednesday. So he's in the pay attention. I'm still not a Christian Watson fan. That's in terms of starting Christian Watson. I just don't, I don't want to start him this week. I mean, 13 yards on the season through two weeks. How do you start that? And a touchdown. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, how I, do you I possibly I mean, start I, that? I, I'm not looking to start him. I'm saying he is completely – all wide receivers, if Malik Willis is the quarterback, are unstartable. Yeah, to be fair to Christian Watson, who had zero yards last year – or last week, I'm sorry, uh, Jaden Reed – had nine more yards than Watson last week. Yeah, last week we know the situation, but you're coming off of a year of inconsistent Christian Watson. Then week one, he gives you 13 yards. He did score. Week two, he didn't do anything. I think there are so many better options. Okay. Pollard and Ridley are starts of the week on the other side of the football. Josh Jacobs is locked into your lineup. I would say, yeah, Josh Jacobs is locked in. Um, if you are prioritizing a an insurance running back for this weekend, for me it is Emmanuel Wilson. I think Jacobs is fine, but it's if he's going to carry the ball thirty times yet again, you're just your your op your window for getting hurt is much higher, more open. Uh, it's up you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you yeah, if you're going to jump into is, an analogy, yeah, if, you need to finish the analogy, Mike. The window being higher is kind of nice. That just means you've got a tall ceilings. You know what I mean? Like I, that That's irrelevant. You're making, but is the window open if it's points? up high because you can't get up there? Well, you don't want it open because how are you going to shut it? Then like it starts from the raining. In, from the so inside. just a higher window that you can't even go through? No. So, yeah, leave the window open, Mike. I'll yeah. throw a rock at it. <laughs> okay. The Bears are 1-1. One one. They take on the 0-2 oh Indianapolis Colts. Colts are 0-2, oh huh? Well, yeah, they went to Lambeau and got almost upsetted to the tune of getting upset. Good job, yeah. Good job, Andy. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Andy minus one and a half, over-unders 43. Uh, you've got two basically rookie quarterbacks that have looked – I mean, Caleb's looked pretty awful. I certainly think he would look better with Keenan Allen, and he has not been available, nor do we really expect him available right now. I think we're on red alert here for Keenan Allen. If you don't recall, last year he missed the – uh, final four games of the season with a heel injury. He is 
missed last week with a heel injury, and he is not practicing currently because of a heel injury. So this is, this is, uh, I think we're in a really bad situation. I mean, the the real problem when you think about like Keenan and like Cooper Cup so far this year, and you talk about oh they like Cooper Cup had twenty one targets looked great, but at thirty one getting hurt becomes easier. Mm-hmm. Keenan Allen staying and, hurt and becomes longer easier. To recover, yeah, and and that's that's the real problem with age at the wide receiver position. Richardson, his passing line is one hundred and ninety point five yards. That's really low. We know Chicago's defense is legitimate, Jason. Yeah, uh, You're pretty worried about Richardson. I am very worried. This is uh, when when I was talking about Gino, who I picked up, and I've got Brock Purdy. I also have Anthony Richardson. Um, obviously, boom, boom, bust. You know, you you look at your matchup and you say, do you need to play with fire this week because he could rush for two touchdowns and throw a 75 yard bomb touchdown in this game. I'm afraid because I do view him, Andy, like how you constantly reference him as a rookie he he is new to NFL football he's, he's kind of new to football it, right yeah I mean really if you look at the total games played in college everything he's he is still so raw and when you go up against a very very good Bears defense we've been talking about how good they are they're top 10 pretty much across the board in almost every measure I, I think they're going to be able to get to him I think they're going to be able to confuse him and so I worry about the turnovers but it's also one of those like tell me what to do with Anthony Richardson, guys. <laughs> I think you hold him this week. I think I think the matchup is tough. The game's almost a uh, a toss up, despite them being at home. Like Carr, Mike is playing Carr. I'd play Carr over Richardson. I if I had Carr, that's easy. I would play. How about Geno Smith or I, Anthony I think, Richardson? I just think that there's a tremendous risk that we saw on display last week I mean he miracled his way to a garbage time touchdown late in the fourth quarter he was negative fantasy points in our league he's he completing, ended up okay with that last drive but so far he's completing 49 percent of his passes he's averaging 200 passing yards a game now I, I exp- and he's averaging 46 rushing yards a game through two weeks I expect Josh That's Downs not enough. I expect Josh Downs available this week he practiced in full at the end of last week and did not play It'll uh, help. Uh, right. I mean, it can't hurt to have another good wide receiver out there. You are at home this week. That's a big question. I mean, is Anthony Richardson an auto start every week to you, Mike? I mean, I to me, it's, it's not the case. I – no, I guess he's not. Uh, he's pretty close. Do you feel like Jaden Daniels is? Jaden Daniels, I think, is the yeah. quarterback five right now. I think Cause so. Because that's the argument. Like, most of the time people are asking me, start sit with Jaden Daniels, and I'm just like, just play Jaden because, like, he can be okay even if he doesn't throw a touchdown. But I, right now I don't feel that way with Richardson because he's making so many mistakes. Like, the, the Washington offense is not a risk-taking offense. No, it's not. But the Colts offense really is. And the question here is, like, if the Colts – I mean, they are favored. That's, it's a but wild... they were favored last week against Green Bay, and I said – Watch out. It's so a, who's winning this game, Andy? I I think Chicago wins the game. Okay. The the comparison of Richardson to to Daniels is I mean it's even closer than you're if you're probably remembering. Daniels was QB3 week 1, Richardson was QB4. In week 2, Daniels was QB19. Wow, with 13 points and Richardson was QB twenty two. No, like, that's closer than I thought. It's like so to 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 think of Daniels as an auto start and Richardson not is probably not like, the right. Like move. that's not being fair to the actual stats, right? Um, but I I do. I mean, I I, I guess I'm looking. If I had Daniels, I'm playing him this week. T- talking through this, I think it is more likely I play Anthony Richardson. The 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 ability to have a monstrous game. You're going to have to take the lumps if you want to get those those weak winning performances his legs are why we drafted him um and i i do think with the pass rush of the bears being very very good he might just need to run a little bit more i i really want to see him running more than i have and i don't I, think you can start any wide receiver no, there no michael sitman yeah junior yeah get him get him i mean he, he's not starting Sitchell. <laughs> huh we <laughs> can do it with everybody it's, yeah, who Do else? It with Alec. Do Josh, it. sit downs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, it's so easy. You just put the word "sit" in front of their name, and the joke works out. Michael Kylan P- Grand and- sit. <laughs> this is these now. These- do Alec Pierce? I, that's the one I was skipping. I don't know yeah. how to do it. 
the this is not an indictment of those players. It's an indictment of of, of a man completing less than half of his passes. Well, and you, I mean, you saw the line: 190 passing yards is the line. If you're going to split that up between a bunch of different players, you're not really sure where it's going. Oh, Al threw out Al Sit Pierce. Okay, all right. It's fine. Look, we're not, not my joke. Okay, then give him a busted. Uh, Got to find it. Busted. All right. How you feel now? The bar was so low. I don't and know. Yeah, how you I, managed to I don't walk know how right I into it. it man. Uh, you start Jonathan Taylor for sure. DeAndre sit. <laughs> oh man, this show's so good. Sit him down. DeAndre Swift stinks. He does stink. However, so does the Colts rushing attack. Yeah. They stink so bad. You mean the defense? It, yes, the, de the, the, <laughs> the rushing defense. The rushing defense. Uh, they are – I mean, we saw them – last no. week it was different, right? You had no, Josh Jacobs. You had a good offensive scheme and system. But it's the still – The offensive line is awful in, in Chicago. It's still the, – the Colts know exactly what they're going to do. If only the Colts could have known <laughs> and prepared for a rushing attack. Obviously, they did. They didn't have the personnel to stop it. But DeAndre Swift – genuinely is bad yeah I, I would not play him this week why would you want to go back to that well when you could i mean carson Steele or deandre swift i would go <laughs> i would go swift i would not man <laughs> oh but yeah. i mean Maybe, it, it, is it, this a, are you calling the deandre swift breakout game no not at all i'm saying that that's he what is, i heard he is a a flex option like if i had mike's team he'd probably be playing <laughs> so you know what i mean if you're in if you're in dire straits <laughs> Uh, J.K. Do uh, not J.K. Dobbins. Gus Edwards or DeAndre Swift? Gus Edwards. Okay. Okay. I'll go Swift. All right. You guys are more I'm bullish on giving him another shot this week. The matchup's good. The performance so far has been bad, and the offensive line is still bad. So I'm on the sit side. Um, D.J. Moore, 29% target share through two weeks, which has led to frustration for D.J. Moore and a fantasy output of wide receiver 44 and 31. Yeah, I still think you can start him and him alone in this matchup. You've got 18 targets through the first two weeks. They're obviously prioritizing him, um, and he can break one off for a big play. I mean, that's big. DJ Amari Moore Cooper is or DJ Moore? <laughs> Cooper. Cooper. Yeah, it's Cooper Good matchup. Um, let's take a quick break, come back with the uh, more exciting matchup of undefeated teams. All right, boys, Houston Texans, 2-0. Minnesota Vikings at home, they're 2-0. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, though, not giving them the credit. Minnesota can't get no respect. Yeah, Houston minus two on the road, over under is 46. Mike, who wins this game? Minnesota Vikings. Oh, all right, so you're give, they got respect there? Yeah. Houston minus two. Nah, man. <laughs> No, I'm on the I'm yeah, on the Houston side. That's I was expecting the Houston answer. I don't. It's not a disrespect to Minnesota. It's a respect to Houston. They're two and zero. Um, both teams have played very well. The Sam Darnold, you know, Willie Pumpkin story continues. It's going to be a tough matchup right now. The Texans defense third against running backs so far in 2024, fifth against tight ends, and so you're going to see, you know, you're going to see push come to shove when it comes to putting pressure on Sam Darnold, seven sacks last week against Caleb Williams for the Houston defense. And can Sam Darnold continue to not make mistakes and make good decisions and get the ball into the hands of his playmakers? And we don't know if, you know, we probably won't have Addison back out there. No, and I we, I, I still have questions on Houston. Look, I, I know they're, they're a Super Bowl favorite, but like citing currently the Houston defensive numbers, they played Anthony Richardson, and they barely beat the Colts, and they played Caleb Williams and the Bears. Like, is the Houston defense as good as advertised? I don't think I we think know stopping, that yet. I think stopping the run, they're as good as advertised because we saw that last year. And so that asks that begs the question about Aaron Jones. He had a bit of a down week last week. He also didn't get as much of the work. Ty Chandler was involved. He got injured in that game, um, which is part of why he didn't get that work. We'll we'll see. He was limited participant Wednesday. I, I expect him to play. Well, is he in your lineup against this Houston defense at home? I, I think so. He's in my lineup over Swift. That's not saying much. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Charbonnet or Aaron Jones? I'm going to go with Aaron Jones there. Ty Chandler last week uh, got Looks involved good. as a result of, you know, you know they wanted him involved. He had 10 
10 carries last week. He had 11 opportunities the week before, but last week he averaged 8.2 a carry on, with a big 25-yard run. 10 for 82 and your long was 25. Like That means you were getting chunks. You were being a very efficient running back. I do think they want the committee. I mean, and so there's yes. going to be a little bit of volatility in that backfield. Jefferson, always, forever, and ever. Mm -hmm. He's in your lineup. But, you know, we'll see what Darnold has in this game. Stroud, you're playing him. Mixon, injury watch right now. Didn't practice on Wednesday. Not considered a long-term injury. Mixon's a very tough guy, but I don't know. I, right now I'm sitting – like, what are your odds of him playing? My odds of him playing are 25%. I, th I I think he'll take a week off with this ankle sprain and let Cam Akers run into a Minnesota Vikings wall. Minnesota so far last year, this year, about 15 points given up to running backs. And the problem with just rolling Cam Akers into your lineup is that it's not just Cam Akers. Like, even when Joe Mixon was there, Dare Agumbawale was a third down back. And you might have Damian Pierce back. Yeah. Jay, how are you feeling about Tank Dell right now? His line's at 49 and a half yards for this game. Yeah, I mean, I if you look at the behind-the-scenes metrics, he is – don't look at snaps, look at route participation. When they, when they throw, they're in 11 personnel. He is almost identical with the other guys. When you look at the air yards, the opportunities, the target share, like he's, he's actually there. He's had a – similar to Amari Cooper, except thankfully he is young and you don't think he's given up on his career. Um, he's had a couple weird drops. You know, we would be viewing him completely differently if last week when he was – He didn't have negative three yards? When, when he was streaking down the field and C.J. Stroud gave him the softest, most layup catch and he should have taken it for – I believe it would have been a 65-yard possible touchdown if he doesn't get run down. Um, we'd be like – Oh, Tank Dell, he's back. He must start. And it that play happened. They found him. He was wide open. He just dropped the ball. So I'm I'm not out on Tank Dell at all. Yeah, I, the only thing with Tank Dell on that wide receiver core in general is just the fact that there's a little bit of unpredictability beyond Nico Collins. Like the fact that one play defines your entire day for Tank Dell would be my kind of pushback. It's just that one play should not define whether Tank Dell's a good starter. One hundred percent. And I, I would, I would say it like this: before, before week one, Andy, you were talking a lot about how, like, you're not down on these guys, but you recognize that it is not going to work out every single week for these three players. It's no. just, it can't. So it's the so other through, two. So right, sure, maybe maybe Nico has you established. You leave my sweet Nico alone. Maybe Nico has established that he's great, but I, I do think if if Tank Dell has a monstrous game, that could come at the expense of. Uh, of Nico, but my point is, over the course of 17 weeks, there will be duds. It's just the fact that it's week one and week two that we think it is what it will be. If these weeks were week five and six, after you know, it it's going to happen like this. So uh, you know, I I think he's a buy low candidate. Right now, uh, I'm looking at the wide receiver stats for 2024. Godwin number one, Nico number two, Reed number three, Jefferson four, Shahid five. Always fun to look after two weeks, isn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, C.J. Stroud, quarterback eight, quarterback 16 so far. Give me the temperature check on C.J. Stroud before we move on. Uh, lukewarm. The Minnesota Vikings defense is very, very good. We saw C.J. Stroud last year that he was – his splits between top defenses and bottom defenses were – And home road. Very, very wide. And then, you know, he didn't have a great game last week against a very good – the Chicago Bears defense. So on the road against a very good Minnesota Vikings defense, I don't think he's a must start. Stroud or Richardson? Blah, I would go Stroud. I'd play Stroud. I knew that would be not so fun for you. Philadelphia, 1-1, one and one, taking on the 2-0. and oh, Talk of the league, New Orleans Saints. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, here's the respect. New Orleans minus 2.5, and, and the over-under is 49.5. Uh, last week before... Philadelphia blew it. Philly was favored by, um, by two and a half, a five point swing. Was and, that Kyle? Was that line before the Saints also beat the Cowboys? Though, no, this was on Monday. Okay, oh so Monday goodness. morning. So that's so stupid. Five <laughs> point swing for it's, one game for one play. <laughs> if Saquon doesn't accidentally drop the the, it was it was a dumb play call in hindsight, but it worked. The play totally worked. It was wide open, an easy catch, game is over, Philly wins, and they dominated. That's that would be the story. That's some overreaction in betting. Like people betting that line. 
knowing that Philly's deep. You know what? It wasn't one play. It was yeah, one there play. Was the whole, the and whole then the next drive yeah. where you're like, oh, the Saints are going to have a good time against that secondary. 100% that drive was where all of a sudden you go, man, Philly stinks. This is part of why Derek Carr is my start of the week because you see the, the, the defense exposed. My point is you, you don't see that if he catches the ball. That drive doesn't exist. Uh, we have, I mean, there's some unhappy Eagles fans this week and they get to go into New Orleans, a tough place to play. The over-under is 49 and a half with the Saints favored by two and a half. That's some points for both teams, baby. Now we are working on the, um, the, the shave your head meter. Yes, it is under construction. We will, uh, hopefully have it up, uh, sometime next week. It's going to be really fun to follow if they start three and oh, man, if they start three and oh, <laughs> I'm gonna get a little You're sweaty. Toast. No, I'm not toast. I'm You're just toast. <laughs> this nothing, was, Jason. Not this was the gauntlet. I know <laughs> they're supposed to start one and four. Oh man, the yeah. Oh man, it's right. Uh, and nothing makes a better podcast than somebody's head being shaved either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great audio. All right. Well, this is going to be a test for New Orleans. Uh, we're going to find out if they win this game. They're they're. I feel like they're very legitimate here. And um, Philadelphia is going to pressure their defense as well. But we don't expect to see A.J. Brown back on the field. So the no, offense the offense is, um, you know, to me, if you ask, I'm going to take back the two things I said before. That probably had everything to do with that line changing. Is That Monday Night Football game, they were interviewing A.J. Brown before the game. Yeah, that could. And A.J. Brown came out and said, I'm mm. probably a couple weeks out. And if Vegas finds out that your number one wide receiver, maybe the best in the game or a top five in the game, is not playing, that's going to make a difference too. So it's fair. I forgot about that. Uh, Jalen Hurts, you're obviously starting him. The Tush Push got it done last week. Saquon, the most touches in the NFL, the most yards after contact, and has he must have he must be enjoying an offensive line moving people around so much. He seemed like if they had just handed him the ball every play, the game they would have won the game going away so he, he's he been great Devonte smith's been great that's kind of the story for that side of the football though right i mean it's hurts barkley and smith and then uh there are those of us who have to start dallas goddard sometimes um when you have lost. are you starting him this week i am starting him this week yeah, i like that I, you you were just absolutely trashing my team and jason squeaked out a win because he's talking to me yes because oh. dallas goddard had the lowest percentage comeback against my fantasy. One well, also because in, in Pacheco got injured. In his defense, I didn't look at his team this morning, and yeah, I might have been disgusted you. by that too. Thank well, you. And I, I lost Najoku and had to squeeze him in. But um, this, oh, oh, oh. this week, and Puka, I've, oh, lost, the, I've got my I losses too. I knew the excuses I've got my losses out. too. <laughs> the only reason I'm not Mr. Sadface is only because you have more losses uh, as, as far as players. But Dallas Goddard, the, the thing is, is, um, he, it was very frustrating to watch. Watched all of his snaps l last week. It was like, no, he didn't even seem part of the game plan. Going back th through his game log last year, there are weeks where he has, you know, three targets, and then the next week he has seven targets. The matchup against the Saints, you know, if you look at last year, schedule adjusted, they were 29th. They were one of the teams you target at that position. I am not saying, start Dallas guard, he's a great start, but he's a low-end tight end one, and I think the matchup is okay. I mean, I would you rather? I, I hate to say this, but I don't know if you say any of those words if he doesn't catch one pass on that last drive. I think you say no, none of those words. No, he throws him into the bottom of the ocean. Jay, I think would, you you might burn his jersey on the show. Would you rather play? That might be true. I know. I know. <laughs> I to, like, so, don't, would you? Jay, I think you feel now thankful to him and couple streaming options because that's Goddard is a streaming option. So Goddard, Mike Gesicki. Oh, I'll take or the Gesicki. Cincinnati Bengals, who has the matchup with Washington. Mm -hmm. He was hot last week. Or what about Hunter Henry against the Jets tonight? Both, both um, of those guys. So I, I would, I would play both of those guys okay. uh, over him. I, I've, I've taken a look at at our wire. We didn't have Hunter Henry available, and uh, you know I could pivot to Pat Fryermuth, but I, I think the matchup is better for Goddard. Where is Rashid Shahid in your hierarchy right now? Is he a must start? Is he a flex Man. start? Like. Well, he's a must start this is he, week. Is Amari Cooper or Rashid Shahid? If Amari Cooper's the the line this week, yeah, I would start R uh, Shahid. Shahid's, Shahid's looked really good. He's so involved, and they're they're giving him uh, carries. They're they're giving him some screens. It's not all the deep shot. His line is three and a half catches. Like it's not. 
I mean, I know I mean, he, that's right. Like, I mean, that's about he's what in, he's involved. Yeah, it, but that that's, involvement, Jason, is three catches and four catches. That's Calvin Ridley's line. I mean, that's the when you're talking about a deep field threat, that's usually about right. what the line's going to be. I mean, be. last year, Rashid Shahid in this offense had three weeks in the first eight where he was inside the top 12. Yeah. Like I, he had those big weeks, and guess what? He scored. Those I, were his touchdowns. I do not believe that Rashid Shahid will be a must start all year long type of player. But in this matchup, I think Philly can score and their secondary looks bad. So I'm going to keep playing them. I have Olave as my start of the week, but if Olave struggles and we go down the path of Garrett Wilson and Drake London and these guys that we had higher expectations for, obviously you didn't draft Olave to be the wide receiver 89 and 26. Um, but again, two weeks is not a season make. No, and they're weird, broken they're, games. So, so I think he's going to play well, but what is the panic alarm going to be if he has a dud? If he has a dud, I think against his secondary, I, I think uh, there there will be reason to have a solid panic because honestly, he's not. I I will be shocked. I'll be shocked if he has a complete dud. He's looked good on film. His you know it, target pecking order is great, but like Mike said, both games for. The Saints were just broken. They just blew them out, and it wasn't due to Olave. If you had drafted Jamison Williams late, which is where you were drafting him, and you had Olave and you've been disappointed, and you had to choose between those two players for this week, Jamison against Arizona or Olave oh, against man. Philly, are you just going with the player that you drafted higher? I, I would be playing Olave. I think that's a really great question. I think people have that exact situation. I would. I'd like. I mean, Jay I Mo hope this you week. could play both of them. I would play Olave though. The Chargers are two and zero. Oh. oh, by the way, Kamara, yada yada, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Please play yeah, him. Yeah. The Chargers are two and zero. Oh. They take on the two and zero oh Pittsburgh Steelers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Pittsburgh minus one and a half at home. The over under is thirty six <laughs> points. This this in our show doc putting the test to testosterone <laughs> g row versus arthur smith oh baby greg roman arthur smith pittsburgh is averaging 38 oh, and a half rushing attempts per game i can tell you stash versus the goatee i can tell you i put um i have Jalen warren flexed into one of my leagues because the, ut the utilization started to go up you remember he's coming off an injury in yes, the preseason he is. week one they barely used him last week it started to get um the utilization went up, and he was pretty effective. Oh, bless you, Andy. He's in my lineup. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's on the mod squad over here. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, these are the number one. Pittsburgh's number one in uh, the NFL in rush attempts per game, and the Chargers are third in rush rate. You know, so you're, you're talking about run versus run, Justin versus Justin. Uh, is this game going to be as boring as it feels? Yes, I promise. Um this will be a game where where there is a combined 80 rushing attempts and 40 passing attempts between these two teams. So then are you – look, J.K. Dobbins is in. You, it, it, the matchup stinks as of right now with the, where the Steelers are ranked against the run, but J.K. Dobbins has been that dude for two weeks. It's – Gus Edwards, are you? Yeah, I, are you playing him? Yeah, I, I think he. I would play him Jerome over Ford? Swift. Okay, what about Ford and Edwards, the Gus bus? Ford, I think I would take the shot because I do think one of the Browns has a lot of fantasy points. Um, Gus needs the touchdown to be valuable, but he he will get fifteen carries. Dobbins, will, this is a weird game where you could legitimately start four running backs in the game. Yeah, J.K. Dobbins weird. has had a hundred and thirty-five and one hundred and thirty-one. Rushing yards in each of the first two games, These but his line continue. his line is set at fifty and a half. It's fair. I yeah, think it's it's fair against this defense. That you, you're not you're not so in on Dobbins after those two weeks that well, I would, he'll blow that line out of the water. Do I you? don't. I'm just. I think that the line is fair. I would like again. I think that J.K. is. I think he he's I, a he's a must play until you see. Otherwise, yeah, I would expect him to do better than fifty and a half rushing yards. The fact that there's four running backs you might play in this game in fantasy, and one wide receiver, <laughs> basically, yeah, like I it's, mean, it's kind of pick, it's kind of Pickens, it's boo. Pickens, and you probably you're really risking things. I mean, I saw Joshua Palmer hit more waiver wires this week than anybody else. Lad McConkey, I watched his film. You know, like this is a very talented player but he's going to have to make the most of the, the few touches he gets. I think Ladd will have a 
line this week where he has like seven, eight, nine targets. He's going to wow. be – but for nothing. Yeah, This is a good pass rush, and they're going to get the ball out quick. And I, I think that he'll he'll end up with like, you know, six for 40 and no touchdown. And uh, so that it's, would be, it's not someone I'm wanting to start. That'd be bad, McConkey. Yeah. So oh, I, got him. And, and Herbert didn't practice Wednesday, but he was seen in limited – or seen participating today. All right. Well, um, one more segment before we close things out. Uh, we are back into the parlay parte. Nice to see things going where's, terribly yet again. Where's my crown? Uh, the week two results are <laughs> yes. in. Yes. And I managed to project Rashad White to pass hey. a measly 25 receiving yards. Um, he had five. Five receiving yards. King of the castle. So I am a clown this week. King that was the castle. fewest receiving yards in 20 <laughs> oh. games for Rashad White. Field, Jay? Uh, it's, it's a little tighter than I thought um, this week <laughs> being the first that I got the clown wig on. Yeah, I had um, I had Ramondre <laughs> Stevenson with two and a half receptions over. And he had five targets. And he had two receptions with 11, with basically 12 minutes left in the second quarter. How he didn't get to three, I don't know, but he didn't. And then somehow, uh, Mike, it didn't look good to start, but Derrick Henry, 70-plus rushing yards was your Trust line. Trust the process. And it worked out. So week three, what do you guys got? I'll jump in here first as the current king. Brandon Ayuk, the, an alternate line of 60-plus receiving yards in 13 games with Debo out. He averages eight targets and 65 yards a game. Plus, uh, the the matchup is is good for him this week. And Debo being out, I I – I think Ayuk, this is this is when Ayuk finally gets going. All right, Jason, parlay, parte, who do you got? I've got James Cook over two and a half receptions. This um, is the third time you've gone to the – You have to do this every time now. <laughs> the, I, I'm the, the reception I was, I was almost over a uh, half interception for Will Levis. That was very tempting, but uh, I, I went over two and a half receptions. James Cook is there receiving back. He's – crushed this line so many times in his career last year Jacksonville allowed the most receptions to running backs they've got a great pass rush I think you'll have a couple screens just designed to go over the top and uh better be three I think it'll be three all right uh I'm gonna we're previewing the game tomorrow but I'm gonna go with Kyler Murray 225 passing yards the alt line you have to throw against Detroit the running game gets shut down it should be a game where there's a back and forth high scoring affair uh in Arizona and Kyler averaged 245 passing yards per game at home last year. I'm never going back to the past. Yeah, we'll get Marvin Harrison involved. And last week, Kyler had 266, and the game was over basically at halftime. Um, you just can't run enough on Detroit, and you are going to have to score against them. So 225 passing yards is what uh, – we'll see if I can get the crown. This is the week, guys. Triple crown? <laughs> Triple crown. Yeah, the, the, the clown wigs, I think I look good, man. The, the wigs look so much better than I – yeah. Thought they could. That I I actually think yeah. I do look good in this wig. I think I look good with my my hat crown. All right, that was fantasy forecast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. DraftKings is dishing out NFL no sweat touchdown bets for all customers every day. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code Ballers. That's the code Ballers for new customers to get three no sweat tokens this week. Tomorrow we'll have more matchups. We'll have the fantasy face off. <laughs> Someone's excited about that. Uh, yeah, because someone has to look stupid again. And it ain't me. And it's not me. So we got the fantasy face off the wheel of shame tomorrow, the matchup breakdowns, and good luck tonight. One more reminder, take your, take the players you're playing out of flex spots. If Ramondre's in a flex spot, put him in the running back spot for tonight's game. Garrett Wilson, get him out of the flex. Put him in your wide receiver spot for Thursday Night Football. We'll catch you tomorrow. Goodbye. Eight seven seven eight hope and y or text hope and y four six seven three six nine in connecticut help is available for problem gambling call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org please play responsibly on behalf of boot hill casino and resort in kansas 21 and over age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction void in ontario opt in each week to get one no sweat for each game day no sweat bonus bet issued based on amount of losing qualifying bet max reward varies bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance for additional terms or responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball.